Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. One of my favorite things about 3D printing is that it enhances and enables you to do a lot more with things that you're already doing. Um, it's kind of like learning, you know, to work with a new material on a new tool in your shop. You know, whether that was maybe the first time you cut up some wood on a bandsaw or, you know, the first time you welded something. Like it opens up so many different doors as to ways to do things easier, cheaper, faster um, versus how you were doing it before. So whether you were into DIY um, or just general repair work, metalworking, woodworking, um, a lot of different hobbies benefit from 3D printing. Uh, it's just, I love the fact that it just enhances and, and, is, and adds and makes things better um, for so many different things. So I wanted to step through on a recent project, uh, the impact that 3D printing had on my consideration for build versus buy, uh, for the different tools I needed, um, and just in general how it changed my thought process on making some things. So if you've ever put a floating floor in, you might recognize some of the tools on the workbench today. And that is exactly the project that I did uh, at this point back about two years ago. I put a floating floor in a kitchen and I didn't have, it's first floating floor I put in. So I didn't have any of the tools I needed. I didn't know what the process for installing it was. I didn't know what I didn't know, quite frankly. So, but as I dug into it and I read the instructions for the flooring, I realized that at a bare minimum, we're gonna need a tapping block. I'm gonna need a spacer block and I'm gonna need some way of installing the last couple rows of flooring when I'm up against the cabinet or up against the wall. So let's step through these. So this is a tapping block. This is made from plastic. This is made from a high density polyethylene. You can see from the label on here, I didn't make this. Um, I thought about it. Uh, you can actually 3D print high density polyethylene. I don't have any. Uh, when I read on the process, it's very difficult uh, to print with. And this is, it's important to note, this is not made from an additive manufacturing process. Um, this is made from a solid sheet of high density polyethylene that has been milled uh, to have these stepped ledges here on it. Um, HDPE is, is a really strong material. It's fairly light uh, for how strong it is. Um, but again, it's not great to 3D print with. I contemplated making this out of PETG and PLA and just seeing how it worked. Um, but I don't think either one of those materials is as durable as HDPE. And at the end of the day, I just wanted to get the project done. I didn't want to make a decision that was going to cause me, you know, pain or, or strife in trying to get the work done or having to make an extra trip since this floor was not getting installed at my primary residence. Um, so I just opted to buy it. This was also 15 bucks. Uh, I would have spent more on a roll of filament, uh, even if I did go the route of trying to make one, and I probably never would have used it again. So this was an easy one. This was buy. Again, 15 bucks, just buy it. By the way, the way this works is, so these two pieces of two by four here, let's, let's, let's call these our stand-in for the flooring. Um, the flooring locks together, and it doesn't like snap together. You've, you've got to force it together quite hard to get it to lock together. Uh, so you have your first course installed, you go and install your second course. Uh, basically this, this block sits here and the flooring isn't nearly as thick as this. That's part of what this does is, is uh, transfer the energy down to a much thinner surface. Uh, but you set this guy in place and then you're hitting this with a mallet or a hammer and that, the force of that locks the floor together. Uh, a couple other things to consider. First of all, you don't want to run, if this was our wall over here, you don't want to run the flooring all the way to the wall. It needs some space to the wall. That's where this comes in. This actually sits on the course of flooring just like this. And here it's probably helpful if I turn this up like this so you can see what this is doing. Uh, this is sitting on the flooring, your wall's back here. It forces you to have a nice gap there. And you need quite a few of these because you know your flooring pieces are generally a lot longer. And you can see I've got a whole box full of these guys. Uh, I think I made two dozen of them. Uh, but you can buy these and they're not overly expensive. They're about a buck fifty uh, a piece to buy. And again, you need probably about two dozen of them for a standard size room. These are 15 cents a piece to, uh, to print. And I didn't even need to design this. Uh, I found this on Thingiverse. Uh, I will put up on the screen uh, the, uh, the page that I grabbed these from and I'll put a link down in the description if you were looking uh, for these. Uh, so again, you know, one-tenth the cost, and I think you can print 18 of these at a time on like a standard Prusa Mark III. This was a no-brainer. This was a, you know, print. I saved probably 30 bucks uh, printing these guys versus just hitting the order button on Amazon. Other thing you're going to need is as you get close to the other wall, so 
let's let this box be just a kind of a stand-in for the other wall. So let's say this is, I'm putting my last course of flooring in now. So I put this one in. This, I'm installing this one now. I guess I can get the tapping block uh, in place to put this one in, but as I get to this last one, I can't even get the tapping block in there. But how am I going to get this locked in place? That's where this guy comes in. Now this is not 3D printed, but this is something that 3D printing enhanced. I did make this. The ones that were commercially available to me at the time, um, when I put this flooring uh, in, by the way, it was like the beginning of COVID, things were really hard to get. Uh, there were ones, in fact, I copied a nice commercial design for one of these that I just, I couldn't get. I went had it in stock. Uh, but the ones that I could get were just a single piece of stamped uh, steel that was, had like a bent edge on this side that went down and then it came up in the other way so you could hit it with a hammer uh, to pull. Problem is, you know, the reviews for them were horrible, just as you would expect after hitting them, you know, probably a dozen times, they bent out of shape and then you couldn't use them anymore. Uh, this I just welded together with a piece, it's a piece of angle iron, piece of flat steel, and then I cut a couple pieces of steel up to make this surface here that you, that you strike. And because you're hitting what is essentially, a, you know, a, a box, welded to this flat steel. It's very, very strong. This thing, I could probably put floors in for the rest of my life, never wear this tool out. It's overbuilt. However, um, you know, the usage of this, by the way, is so this edge goes down into here. You're striking this face here with a mallet and it pulls the floor over and locks it into place. Well, as you can see, it's sitting on the floor, right? Well, I want to scratch the floor up. So what I did was I designed just a, a slider down here out of TPU. And the reason that you see this type of surface finish is because it's stepped. It's actually designed as such that when you set this on the floor, uh, this slope positions this uh, in just the right spot that it's sitting flush on the, the, uh, the top of the floor. Um, but TPU is a perfect choice here because uh, it's, it's soft enough that you're not gouging up the, the floor with any of the, the, uh, the hard printed edges. Um, but it's also very, very durable. And you can see I designed this with some countersunk uh, screws in place and some tapped holes here in the, uh, the, the flat bar stock um, to get this in place. So this was an example where uh, I probably would have bought this if it was available for a reasonable cost, but I couldn't get it. And I actually think my design is better than the ones that are commercially available. The ones that are commercially available, I don't see any type of pad here, uh, any type of slider. It's just a smooth steel surface on the bottom. I'm not saying that it's going to ruin every piece of flooring you put in. That flooring is actually pretty tough and durable on top, but I'd rather not take the chance. I, I like the idea of having the pad here. When you strike this, if you strike downward um, you know, at all, you're not worrying about you know, damaging that floor, even knocking any of the paint off of the, uh, the installation tool. It just all transfers. Any, any of the downward force transfers into this TPU pad on the bottom. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I realize that this week's video might not have been as exciting as a lot of the design things that I feature on this channel, but I wanted to take some time just to kind of talk about what things make sense to 3D print and what things make sense to do in another process, um, you know, or, or just buy. I probably could have 3D printed this in a couple of different pieces, and it might have even held up for, you know, a couple of rows of flooring. Not the right process. Um, welded steel uh, augmented with a TPU piece, far better. I could have 3D printed this tapping block. It would have been inferior. I would have spent an enormous amount of energy trying to get it to be anywhere near um, as square and you know well finished as this one. Um, just not worth it. This was 15 bucks and readily available. You know, and that might not be the case where you are. Maybe you're watching this video from a location where it's really difficult to get things, um, you know, just standard tools, uh, you know, maybe due to proximity to, you know, hardware store or, you know, shipping hubs, whatever. If I wasn't going to get this thing for weeks and or the shipping was going to cost me like 40 bucks, you darn well better believe I would have printed it. And if I had to go through a couple different material choices or even if the thing only held up for maybe, you know, 10 rows of flooring, Still wouldn't have cost that much in PLA to print, right? However, this perfect example of I very easily saved 30 bucks 3D printing these with a five minute search on Thingiverse. So, guys, if this is your first week here, uh, I do a new video like this every week where I, you know, have a featured design that's either my own or someone else's that solves some problem around the shop, around the house. 
uh, or they just make something better. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed it and you want to see another one of these next week, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.